It's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. The tomahawk. <laughs> um, you know, just because it's large doesn't mean it should be intimidating. This is a very simple cook. And one of the benefits of ceramic grills and the Kamal Joe Kettle, Kettle Joe uh, is that you can start low and slow and work your way up and then blister sear. So I think the best method for this is the reverse sear. Let's do a couple extra little ads, uh, value ads for you, and let's get this baby on. Here we go. First thing I'm gonna do, and you've seen us do this in other steaks, is put a little scruff on it. So I'm just gonna trace with my knife and go across the surface of this steak, creating more nooks and crannies for caramelization, for smoke adherence, for uh, seasoning. And don't forget that thick fat cap right there. I'll go a little deeper on that just to promote rendering. Go, 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 go. Now for the seasoning, all right? Uh, I wanna put a salt layer down first so pretty liberal amount here uh, you know go 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 because think about it this is all the surface area we have but it's very thick so there's gonna be a lot of meat in there once we slice that didn't ever see smoke or seasoning so that salt will start the osmosis process and start to wick moisture out the second layer is a sweet heat so we have salty we have heat and we have sweet. That sweet's gonna build the bark and the heat's gonna bring a lot of flavor. So great combination of three flavors here. All right, now we've stabilized our Kettle Joe at 325 degrees. Um, and Nathan and I were just talking about this a minute ago. You almost have, it's almost easier to cook this big steak than it is, uh, say, a, a 12 ounce New York strip. There's a lot more wiggle room, wouldn't you say, Nathan? Oh, yeah, more room for error, actually. Yeah, see, I mean, if you got your grill at 325, I mean, nothing's happening fast, right? So we have time to continue to check, to flip. Uh, usually on a steak this size, and it is a monster. Uh, I usually look at like 35 minutes on each side. We're trying to take it to an internal temperature of 120 before we let it rest, raise the temperature on the grill, and blast sear. We might even sneak a little bone marrow in there before we blast sear it, but I get ahead of myself. Let's get it on the grill. A little smoke goes a long way. We're just gonna use one oak or hickory wood chunk for this. And remember, smoke is your secret seasoning and a powerful seasoning like that. So again, a little goes a long way. You're just gonna bury it in the hottest portion of your charcoal, of your embers, let it combust, then top the grill back with the slow roller, place your steak on, close that dome. Let's check back in about 35 minutes. It's been 35 minutes, so let's take a look. Oh yeah. Oh man. I'm loving that amber hue that we've got going on. Look, notice the pool up on top, the sweating out of the moisture content on the bone, and even the drawback right here. It just shows you that things are happening. Let's go ahead and flip. And, and again, this is that low and slow portion of the sear, okay? So we're still gonna have an opportunity to get a blistering bark but we are well on our way. Let's shut the dome, continue to smoke, and now we're getting the dripping smoke that drops on the charcoal, caramelizes, and comes up. So we still got a little bit of that wood chunk in there smoking, but we're also smoking with the drippings of, the, of, of itself, right? So beautiful things are happening. Let's shut this dome, go for another 35 minutes. We're looking for that 120 to 125 to let it rest and then allow the grill to come up and blister sear. Let's just do it, here we go. There's about 10 minutes left on the initial part of this cook. Remember, we're still gonna reverse sear it, but I wanna sneak this little beauty on there and start getting that bone marrow to soften up so we can slather it on the outside while it's resting. Uh, and I'm liking where we're at. We're probably at about 110 right now. And always take thermometer temperatures right you're plugging it in you're checking your you're checking your temps you don't want to overgun this it's very simple stuff we're just gonna let this warm up and then we'll slather it we'll raise the temperature on this kettle joe we'll blister sear where's your thermometer i, I said use it but i said use it I, I got 20 years of of being the one building the fire and putting it on there and just every time you cook something use your finger and temperature probe it and then probe it and then 20 years later, you're, you, you are the thermometer. That sounds so cocky. It's just <laughs> like, I'm, I'm definitely not the thermometer, you know? But uh, I don't travel with a thermometer. I, I, don't, I don't own a thermometer. I, I do have a thermo pin back at the house, uh, and those are great thermometers. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly but surely yeah. spiraling <laughs> downward right now. Use a thermometer. I think we're at about 112. All right. All right. Yes, 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 
Yes. Dang. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Look at this. And we'll use half of it now, so we'll start low. But that that starts to happen. Usually I do this on the cutting board, but this seems like a proper place. And remember, we're still going to let this rest, but let's get that bone marrow. And talk about ultra beefy flavor. We're going to let that bone marrow kind of soak in. Do your thing, bone marrow. And now I'm going to flip it and get the other side. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, I thought that one side was good. This one, this one's, let me look at this. Du, 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 du. I can't even keep up with my thought process, team. I'm just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna be quiet and let this happen for a second. Let's go ahead and move this over the cutting board so it can rest. Dude. Wow. Everything is yes about this right now. And we've still got a little ways to go on temp, so I'm gonna raise the temperature on that kettle, Joe, and put the grill grates low, close to the charcoal, so we can blister sear and finish the steak. Let's get them. Oh, the rest <laughs> is over. Okay, and look at that little pool of deliciousness. Let's draw that on top. And let's get that blister here. Now you can imagine once this hits, there's going to be a flare up, right? So notice how I've got all my charcoal banked to one side. So I'm going to put that meat on this side, which is kind of counterintuitive, right? You'd expect to put it right over top, but we'd have a huge flare up. We could drain this off, but I, I just, I want, I just want to do it. Look at that. That's a good opportunity while it's sitting here and we've got this angle to look at what's going on. This is the decal on the outside or the spinalis if we're... Speaking in anatomical terms, that is the best part of the entire steer. And then we got this big eye right here, the rib eye, which is great. There's a lot of fat content in here, but you can fish around and find some nice meat. And we'll of course have both sides of the meat on the actual bone or the rib here, which is a lot of fun to chew on or give to, give to the smallest person in the room. That's what I like to do. Let's go ahead while it's sitting there, we're gonna season this side with just a little bit more salt. And we'll give it a flip. Snap, crackle, pop. A little more salt. 30 seconds, we're back onto the cutting board. All right, let's get it off the groove. Oh, yeah. Bring it back over to the table. Now we've already let this steak rest, so we are good to start trimming at this point. And we wanna release it from the bone, all right? So we're gonna stand it up straight, and then we're gonna use our knife and trace down. There's a little knuckle here that we'll have to pop down and through. So watch this. Release, pop down and through. And again, this is that great piece. Oh, look at the smoke ring too. Oh, beauty, little. Somebody out there saying, oh, way too much salt. It's not, <laughs> this beef is just soaking it up, okay? But that is, again, that is so much fun to hand to the smallest person in the room and just let them, let them go for it. Uh, all right, the spinalis. Let's kind of break this down. Uh, spinalis and I, I want that spinalis separated. So much of butchery can just be done with your hands too. Uh, nature gives us a roadmap. And look, that eye wants to separate as well, so there. There's that, spinalis, and this is that globular fat that you can fish around in and find some meat. Like, that's gonna be a stunning piece. Uh, I like to slice the spinalis into you know, quarter inch slices. And then any of this juice that's on the cutting board is board sauce, so it's perfect to take and just roll. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the magic, that's the magic. So. We'll call this uh, Spinalis City. It's gonna hang out there. We'll come over here. As we slice this, the meat will begin to interact with the oxygen and it'll start to bloom out and it'll start to rouge, if you will. So it'll look more done than it actually is. So don't freak yourself out. Even if you're using the thermometer and you know you're spot on, give it a second, let the air hit it, it'll rouge out and you'll have that beautiful whatever your temp was that you were going for. 
you know, something like this, so nicely marbled. I like a, uh, a medium rare plus, almost a medium. We want all that collagen to do that. You see that little piece of fat right there? If that's just raw fat, it's no good, but that's turned into uh, moisture and flavor. So I've got a nice little line there. We've got Spinalis City here. We'll fish around and find a couple more fun pieces there. And then if we're plating uh, family style, that's just kind of fun like fun like that. You know, maybe turn it sideways. Uh, yeah. Hey, is that okay? Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe maybe we give people access to this, you know, but uh, if we don't cut this right now, people won't just go for it. But that is a super fun presentation. You know I'm going for that spine, Alice. Oh, look at that, dude. Crazy. Yeah, give me that piece right there. Melt in your mouth. Smoke, beef, salt, fire. Don't be intimidated. The grill makes it easy for you. Low and slow for a while, then bring it up, let it rest. Big bold sear in the end. Simple things done perfectly win every time. And in a cut this big, technique driven, just, just keep it, just keep it steady. Just hang out with it, have some fun, have a beverage, you know. Uh, delicious doesn't have to be difficult. I say it time and time again, the tomahawk, the bone marrow encrusted tomahawk, it sounds regal, it sounds so, so, so like, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Give it a go. Have some fun. Take it to a neighbor. Cook it with friends. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 I digress. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed that bite or those two bites right there, do me a favor. Hit the notification button. Hit the subscribe button. Do leave us a comment, please. I try to read every single one of them. All the things. Back. All the things. All yeah. the things. All the things. <laughs> Anyways, folks, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.